Just to give a brief overview of the deck, it initially started off as I want I got Black Lotus, so I want to do Doomsday. Then it pivoted into I think the best way to do Doomsday, given the kind of mana situation I ended up in, was to get Ad Nauseum and become an Ad Nauseum deck. Um, then late in the draft, after I kind of had a lot of opportunity to goldfish it and managed to get like all the tutors and gush, uh, I lost the demonic consultation, which made the Oracle package a lot less per potent maybe so then i had to pivot into death wish and become a tendrils of agony deck out of the sideboard so about half of the matches are won on the back of uh doomsday into thassa's oracle and the other half are won off of death wish into tendrils of agony and i think there might be a couple brain freeze ones in here as well but um that's the basic engine of how the deck works yagmas will plus black lotus is really good it's a luris deck at its core so uh luris plus black lotus is obviously synergy as well um but mostly Lurus is there's a backup plan for when things really go awry. So, cool. So the first match I'm going to be talking about tonight is against Talon. Uh, Talon sat immediately to my left, and uh, we initially competed over generic blue cards. Um, I saw Talon take Ragavan in round two and figure they were going into uh, into just kind of a blue-red Delver-style deck. Uh, the Dragon Rise Channeler and Monastery of Swift Sphere made me feel more confident in that. And then in round 12, uh, he pivoted over and grabbed Thoughtseize Inquisition, which I think is a great pickup. Obviously, I've talked already about how I don't, I didn't particularly worry about that because those two cards, I wanted one of those two or Duress, so I figured I could float them for forever, and there was nobody else in black at the table, so I had the opportunity to basically float those as long as I wanted to. Now, um, for the actual deck, before we get into watching the match itself, I'm just going to take a breath here. I mean, I've been breathing a lot right up and downstairs. So, um, one second. Cool. So this is not Talon's list. This is Steven's list. We'll talk about that one hopefully tonight as well. Um, but Talon's list uh, ended up kind of a lot more black than it looked initially. Obviously, like the fact that there was one black player at the table made it that it was a lot easier to move there. Uh, hey Kyle, how you doing? Welcome. Uh, we got the whole St. Louis crew on here tonight. This is great. Um, but if you look at the list, you can see Dark Confidant was a card that I was excited to get and wasn't able to. Um, but there's also Inquisition, there's Thoughtseize, Claim to Fame ended up showing up in this list. There's a lot of just like interesting kind of croxa styled things, but at its core, it's an aggressive red deck that runs blue for counter magic and black for a little disruption, is how I'd frame it. The cards that I think about in this matchup are Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast. Obviously, neither of those are particularly relevant unless we're going for a Doomsday kill. Um, because Death Wish into Tendrils dodges it pretty well. Hey, Bree, how you doing? Uh, the other card that I really am nervous about is Daze. So obviously Daze is one that's eminently good to play around and it's pretty easy to, but it is a card that I think about and have to be constantly watching for because the free counter magic is pretty good. Um, the uh, other value engines like Ancestral Vision and Thought Treasure Cruise are probably too slow in this matchup, but uh, obviously good cards as his ancestral recall so i think there's like a lot of things here that if talon is able to push it to the late game i probably lose the game but i can slide under most of this stuff right so days is a card i have to think about um but assuming that i can get past the thought seize and inquisition uh spell pierce and days are the cards that are disruptive for me but let's see what happens in the actual match so let's jump over here and find talon yeah all right, so in this matchup, it looks like Talon wins the die roll, which is not super great for me, uh, given how kind of aggressive this deck is going to be. Um, but uh, again, like I think that mostly matters for the two disruption spells. If I can dodge the Thought Seize Inquisition, then I have to worry about Spell Pierce and Daze. So this hand, obviously only one land isn't great, but I have I have uh, Gitaxian Probe, I have Vampiric. This hand seems to do the things it's trying to do. Also, having Pact of Negation is just like bonkers good because that's a card you want when you go off, um, especially against a deck that runs Spell Pierce. But we'll see. So I can't imagine I'm mulliganing the sand. And looks like Talon drew seven as well. Uh, so the things I'm thinking about the sand are first of all, use the Cataxian Probe to, to see, to, to try as a card draw, right? A lot of times it can be a way to check to see if you're clear to go for the combo. I don't think it's going to be this one in this hand. Oh, I threw that hand away. Apparently I was too conservative 
and thought that it was not good enough. Interesting. I Looking at it now, I think I feel fine about it. Um, but I guess just the downside of if I don't find an island, I just lose the game isn't very good. So, okay. Uh, this hand is better. I mean, it has two lands. It's a little slower. Uh, it doesn't have the protection for the pack negation, but you're going to be able to go to turn two tutor into turn three tutor. Ragavan is an interesting one that is much better against my previous version of the deck. Um, in this version of the deck, there's not a single card that you can take that truly messes up my plan. Black Lotus is obviously a ridiculous rip there. Uh, it makes turn two ad nauseum going to happen, uh, assuming that there's no island left up for a spell pierce, but we'll see. Uh, if there is a spell pierce, then it's not like the worst thing in the world, which kind of means I'm going to be going for probably a like turn four off the back of a Yawgmoth's Will into Black Lotus. We'll see. It's been a little while since I actually played this deck, so... Um, stepping back and kind of seeing what it feels like at this point after having played like seven matches with it. This was match two, right? So this is on day one with it. I'd only play against Brandon and done a lot of gold fishing, obviously. But uh, I would love to like hear any questions or anything people are wondering about or suggestions for how to play this deck better. I think it ended up in a really cool spot, but I also don't think I played it perfectly by any means. All right, so Island getting played before the Ragavan is a bit of a signal, right? So Monastery Swift Spear. So Monastery Swift Spear and Ragavan attacking together is going to be a pretty big beat. Uh, the island getting played, I think Ragavan can play islands. I don't know, but either way, we'll find out. Uh, let's see, let's pull for Ragavan. Looks like, yeah, you can, oh, you can cast that card. Okay, so never mind. the mana doesn't actually matter. So I get taken to hit for four. Uh, what's the card that's exiled? Come on, Mark, play faster. Island, okay, so I can't cast an island, obviously, so that's great. Um, losing an island off the top is just good for me. I'd much rather draw other cards. Uh, no mana left open. <laughs> okay, I, I already remember what happens in this game and I hate myself and we all get to watch me feel real stupid right now. Um, so casting this uh, into a daze and kind of like I lose if there's I, I lose if there's a daze is pretty like annoying, but there's one card in the deck that seems like it's worth it uh, to me. So uh, might as well just play because there's no mana left open, right? All the lands are tapped is what I'm thinking at this moment. Uh, so I'm going to go for the turn two ad nauseum. I have an offer you can't refuse. I almost assuredly win if this resolves. I'm stupid and forgot that Ragavan makes treasure tokens because I don't play magic very much anymore. Uh, so here's where we just feel like I'm going to lose the whole match because I'm an idiot. Uh, and yeah, that didn't feel great. So um, this is me learning how Ragavan works as a card. You can see my hands flittering around uh, trying to figure out what's going on uh, when you look at the card at the top there. Look at the optimistic storm counter set on two. That just really shows my state of mind when I was casting it ad nauseum. Hey, two chems. Welcome, welcome. We're just watching me lose to Talon and feel really sad about the fact that I forgot how uh, forgot how the counter works on uh, or how Ragavan makes treasure tokens. Inquisition of Kozilek revealing my hand. I don't even know what the right choice is here. Probably that Yogmoth's will. Um, it's pretty good to just clear out the Lotus from ever coming back. Uh, Talon chooses to take the Demonic Tutor. Uh, I don't know. I guess Wishflaw's Talisman is, if you want to take a Tutor, it's better to take this one than Wishflaw. But um, the least replaceable card is Yawgmoth's Will. Losing the Pact of Negation is very annoying for me because it's obviously one of our protection spells. But having the, uh, having the, the there's no more hard counter spells left in Talon's deck. So it's mostly not needed, especially with an offer you can't refuse if I really need to play around days for some reason. Dragon Rage Channeler. Okay, I'm sitting here at 12 life. Uh, there is not going to be Delirium, so I probably am going to be taking, what, four, five, six damage next turn, maybe? So I probably have another turn if I want to. Um, and I do, right? There's, there's nothing I can really grab here. I could, uh, if I still, I don't have Black Lotus left in the deck, um, but next turn I should be able to go off, right? If I search for Dark Ritual, then I have Dark Ritual into Yawgmoth's Will into um, into Black Lotus Dark Ritual and Demonic Tutor. I don't know, there's probably some, probably some Stormline there. At least is what I'm thinking right now. 
I don't have a draw spell, so getting Doomsday won't work unless I get some more help from the board here. But um, we'll find out what Ragavan exiles because that could easily, like Ragavan could easily exile one of my two combo wins. At which point, there's no not much reason to try to go for the other one. Brainstorm gets exiled. That's a obviously a play straight out of Legacy. Talent of I cannot imagine possibly not casting the Brainstorm in this situation, which is honestly nice for me because it means that next turn when I get to cast the Yawgmoth's Will, I get a Brainstorm available, um, which would open the line to a Demonic Tutor if I have the blue mana floating, which I think I do. Just looking at it right now, like when I play this deck, obviously I want to have like I want to have a piece of notebook paper open next to me and just like be able to try it out and make sure I'm right. But kind of the feel of the moment I have right now is, okay, great, I'm glad that Brainstorm got cast because that opens me up to a Doomsday pile where I can still wish Call Talisman for Dark Ritual, run through the same line to get to, uh, to get a bunch of mana off the Ritual and Black Lotus, and then cast Doomsday. The weird thing there uh, is that Yawgmoth's Will plus Doomsday is kind of a Nambo where you use the Black Lotus out of the graveyard to cast the Doomsday, and normally you'd be able to then search for it from your graveyard. Um, but because... Yawgmoth's Will exiles it instead. You're never gonna be able to get the, you're not you're not gonna be able to get the mana back, right? So you basically have to open up into a Doomsday pile without having the Black Lotus in the pile, which is annoying. But given that I have Gush in my deck, it's not a death sentence by any means. There's just a lot of lines in this deck, and that's why I think it's really important when you play a deck like this to have an awareness of the options and to know know the backup lines, right? You can't just have one pile that you go to every time. Um, Given the creatures on board, obviously I'm super dead next turn, so I have to win this turn, uh, which hopefully I can do. Lotus Petal is nice. That adds an additional two mana, uh, given that I'm going to recast it off the Yawgmoth's Will. It also opens uh, up for a cute little an Offer You Can't Refuse line, turning an Offer You Can't Refuse into another copy of Lotus Petal. So I'm sure I do that just because I love the cutesy fact of it, but we'll see. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know whether to go for a Stormwind or Doomsday win here, but... With the Lotus Petal, you probably, that increases Storm Cut enough. Um, also, Talon sitting at 16. So yeah, this if I had to play this in this moment right now blind, I would for sure be going for the Tendrils line. Um, so, but we'll see. I assume I could still get Dark Ritual. Uh, but we'll find out. Probably not getting that Mystic Remora. And this is still the same game where I turned to just like screwed up wildly and threw away an Ad Nauseam Black Lotus. Uh, for no reason, whatever, like no, because there's a rag of head in play, uh, which I think just goes again to show the resiliency of the deck. So let's see, I'm probably just like counting out math right now to see if the death wish into uh, into tendrils ends up with enough mana and storm count. But like, again, I, I can't do the math right now um, as fast as I could at the time when I'd been gold fishing this 35 times in the past three days. Uh, but I feel like that probably does work fine. Cool. So Dark Ritual, good choice. Um, so again, we're gonna go. Oh, okay, I didn't. I didn't do the cutesy line with an offer you can't refuse. I guess I am worried about days. Maybe that would make sense to me. Uh, so I probably am gonna try to leave up one blue mana this entire time, but we'll see if that's actually what happens or not. But Storm Counter that two right now, going up to three after casting the Yawgmoth's Will. Uh, so removing the blue from the pool, but leaving the Underground Sea untapped. Um, yeah, the, the only card, again, I'm going to pause this and look at deck lists to make sure I'm right about that. Uh, but the only card I think I need to worry about right now is the Daze. So let's run through that. There's Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast as well. Um, Spell Pierce has already been used uh, to that early play. Nothing else in here is particularly relevant. But like this is the thing I find myself doing a lot. Is like, okay, Snapcaster Mage doesn't matter because there's only two mana up. Uh, and then like are there any creatures with flash or like there's just so many weird like staring at deck lists while you play type of situations that make this kind of way of playing magic very different than playing in paper um but yeah playing around days and pyroblast are kind of the two cards that are on top of mind this gets us up to six storm count three mana and we're gonna have some more mana so we're basically at seven eight mana total which uh is not enough is that right three six seven eight so eight mana should not be enough for demonic tutor into uh demonic tutor death wish tendrils it should be enough for brain freeze though what's our storm count at seven 
seven, eight, nine. So that would be 27 cards. Yeah, so Brain Freeze does it here. So Black Lotus, adding some black mana. We only need the blue mana for the Brain Freeze and an offer you can't refuse, just in case. Let's see. Seven, eight, nine. Yep, this 20, 27 cards. Uh, I think at this point I'm checking to make sure there's no Eldrazi in the deck because uh, that's one, obviously one of the terrifying things. Death Wish, going to grab a card. Where is it? Oh, did I forget to put Brain Freeze in the sideboard? No, there it is. Okay, good, thanks. Uh, I guess I'm just looking to see other options maybe. I don't know. There's also this weird tension when playing this kind of deck of uh, like wanting to play fast so your opponent's not mad at you when they think you're slow rolling and also having 10 million ways to accidentally kill yourself with the deck by playing it wrong. So, uh, But yeah, there's the Brain Freeze uh, 427. And I think this is where Talon is talking about like, do I have a Pyroblast? Do I not? Uh, even if I do, is that enough? And there's an offer you can't refuse on the Pyroblast. Theoretically, a Pyroblast plus Reb does break me here. So maybe I should have at some point. Uh, I, uh, if I had been smart, I would have offered you can't refuse the red, uh, Lotus Petal. Although maybe I'm just like super smart and just worried about Pyroblast the entire time. Um, that's possible. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's really hard kind of like when you're in the mindset of playing these games to take yourself out of the flow state of just like making the right call in the moment um, because of instinct and then trying to analyze why when you're making the right call and like when to pause and just like think through all the options because i played this deck a lot like like i said 35 matches in the past two days it's probably underestimating it honestly um all of those are goldfish of course because that's how this works but um I feel like I had a very good count of just like instinctual math that I don't have anymore when I'm playing it because it's it's much after the fact at this point. Cool. So I think we are going to be going to game two, hopefully. Talon is still thinking, probably. I don't know. Uh, there's also like, uh, is there anything that I could draw on my or that I, that I could do on my upkeep before I get to uh, before I get to it? Right, kind of like ancestral you to kill you, which is an option sometimes if you go like doomsday into a brain freeze, they can ancestral you to, to kill you on their own upkeep, or like snapcaster into something on their upkeep to put a card back. Uh, so I think Talon was just looking through. Do I have any options at all before I concede? Which is a super reasonable thing to do. Um, but if we look at the deck list for Talon, there's just there's nothing there on upkeep that would matter, and at least pre-board. So, um, but yeah, there's there's always like a million different ways to play this game, uh, and I would never want to assume that me looking at somebody's deck list will see all the options. So, it felt polite to to give all the time for that. So now let's let's jump to sideboards and look at kind of what things Talon is probably bringing in. Um, Flusterstorm is the one that comes first to mind. Opposition Agent is a card that's incredibly good against me. I think I have six main deck tutors that are just like bonkers. Uh, plus a two, one fetch line, maybe two fetch lines. But like there's enough tutors in the deck that Opposition Agent means that I can never act into three mana. Uh, other things, I don't even know what Raise the Effigy does, but let's find out. It looks like... Um, as well, like you could probably do Ancient Garage. I don't think it's good enough, given that I don't really have to rely on my artifact stay in play. Uh, Raise the Effigy is another Shatter, so probably not good enough, but I could see if you have other things that are dead you want to take out, maybe. Um, same thing with Embreath Shield Breaker. Uh, Envelop is a card that is probably for this matchup. I don't love these cards in general. They just feel incredibly shallow, or incredibly um, uh, narrow to me. But they're good enough that people play them. And I mean, it's pretty good against me, right? It stops, uh, it stops my death wish. It stops my, uh, it stops my doomsday. So like, it's probably good, but <laughs> it is, it is just very narrow card and probably only good against me on a turn where I'm going off. And then if I'm going off, I hopefully have a way to deal with counter spells already, but we'll find out. Uh, and then as far as my list, actually we can just watch what I do for sideboarding because that's an option as it goes here. So let's see what sideboarding looks like. 
Um, the cards that immediately jump out to me, Chill. Uh, I have not been very. I was not very impressed with Chill in this draft. I think in general it's very good, but against these kind of players uh, and people that are not heavily reliant on red, like a mono red deck, for instance, I think it's just not as good as it could be. Uh, Hope of Gearfer is ridiculous in all of these counterspell matchup matchups. Hydroblast, Swan Song are very good. Uh, hey, how are you doing? Uh, we are we are analyzing some vintage road history deck. So this is a doomsday death wish combo deck uh, that is have, have based around playing doomsday at all team and winning the game. Watching Talon's uh, blue red aggressive Delver variant uh, and how to deal with all of these um, how, how to deal with all these counter spells that are going to be coming in in game two especially. So Swan Song predictably comes in. Dress Down is a card that I don't think is very good in this field but i felt like if any matchup it's good it's probably this one um but yeah i i if i could re-sideboard for this i probably wouldn't mess around with either the doubt void walker or the dress down i think they're just like not particularly good in this matchup and i think keeping the deck more consistent is probably more it's probably better <laughs> yet yeah, mono black standard is not quite as powerful as the level of vintage history decks that we are uh dealing with here but you do get to play Liliana, and that's a really good card. It's just better with Dark Ritual. Looks like I'm siding out both of the tutors because I'm scared of Opposition Agent. And obviously I'm not going to play them into an Opposition Agent, but they just are dead cards if one does happen to resolve. So both the top deck tutors come out and Knight's Whisper comes out, just as kind of not a super powerful card. Uh, especially if I am not going to be trying to combo fast. Right? Knight's Whisper is a good way of drawing into a pile. Or going late in the game, being able to just like resurrect value before getting Loris on the table. Uh, in this matchup, my life total is more under pressure, so Lance Whisper is not as good. And obviously, I, I, there I also took out the Mystic Remora because I'm not going to have the time to just sit there around while they're playing creatures into me. So Mystic Remora is pretty weak in this kind of creature aggressive matchup. Uh, I think I would leave in. I don't know. I don't know which of those cards I would leave in in place. Um, Probably maybe the Vampiric Tutor because it's just a card that's powerful enough that it's justified and you can do it in response to an opposition agent if it happens, things like that. Uh, here's me figuring out how to use companions. So Luris is a still a companion of this matchup. The only card in the 70 or in the uh, 45 that stops her from being a companion is Energy Field, and that's uh, Energy Flux. That's obviously not one that's coming in this one. So Tournament Thought Seeds, not great against my hand. Or not, not not great against doesn't great isn't great to see happen to you. Uh, Gush is the card that I think is the most scary here, so that's the one I would take if I were Talon. But we'll see. Looks like Brainstorm is the choice. Um, Brainstorm. I mean, I do have a I do have a blue source into a fetch land, so that's a reasonable choice. But um, Gush is a card that I mean, there's books written about how good that card is, and it's one that I'm incredibly scared of uh, losing because it just means that my choices get a lot more limited. But turn one sleight of hand, uh, that gets easier once the brainstorm's gone. I have the chill and the ad nauseum. I don't know. I, I take the chill because I it's a card that's supposed to be really good in this matchup uh, in my head at this point, and I want to make see if it actually is. Plus, I'm not close to casting the ad nauseum. I don't want to cast it without protection in this kind of matchup. So ad nauseum is not going to do anything for a while anyway. But turn two chill is going to be pretty useful. Is what I'm thinking, especially given that uh, my opponent didn't have a land in turn two. So if I, they don't have a land, I might as well try to further constrict them from casting their red spells. Uh, Talon kept a hand that is, uh, it looks like it, how many cards? Five, six? So Talon mulliganed once um, and is currently at five cards. So yeah, we'll see uh, what Chill does in this matchup. Um, but it's again it, against Talon. It's not a backbreaking card where it completely stops all interaction or stops like the deck from functioning. It is just a way of slowing down that early clock. Um, I think Chill's probably better on the draw than it is, or on the play than it is on the draw, um, because it stop. You can go, you can hit their second play, but in either of these cases, right, they're going to slide a one drop underneath you. Like if they have a Ragavan in their hand, Chill doesn't do a whole lot against it. Especially given that Ragavan's going to be generating tokens, and like there's all sorts of reasons why I think Chill is not particularly suited for this field. But I love Chill, and I love all these like color hosers. So I put it in my deck, and if it's in my deck, I might as well put it in the matchup. Uh, there, I'm fetching. 
hold on, I need to back up. I don't even, I was waxing poetic about chill and I got lost to what would happen here. Uh, looks like, oh, Inquisition of Kozilek hit the mind twist. Okay, that's what happened. I cast chill, we go to the, we go to Talon's turn. Talon casts Inquisition of Kozilek, removing my uh, mind twist. That feels pretty bad. Drawing the Thassa's Oracle is fine. It's not a card I ever really want in my hand, but um, it's fine. Now, I'm playing the Wishclaw Talisman, knowing that it's very likely to get blown up, seeing as Talon has lots of anti-artifact shenanigans, but there's a chill in play, so it won't be able to get blown up for a couple turns at least. Uh, Talon fight, manages to find the second land and plays the Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant's going to be really good in this matchup, especially seeing as my deck doesn't really do anything right now. Um, Duress is a fine draw. I don't know, this Chrome Box is feeling really dumb right now. Uh, I feel like there's a way to win here. I'm <laughs> just like looking at all these just like tutors and fast mana and stuff. And like, I don't know, I have a chill, a dress down, uh, like a mind twist. There's all sorts of cards that are reactive in my hand, starting off duress, for instance. So my hand is super reactive right now and it's reacting against nothing. It's really shows kind of the pain of having all the reactive cards is that when your opponent stumbles on mana or can't do anything, if your hand is full of reactions and you've like made your deck less consistent, you just are so much worse off right imagine if that chill and dress down were instead vampiric and imperial seal like there's no way i could lose in that matchup um but i slowed the deck down intentionally in order to stop things from happening so i'm doing this on my own end step i'm casting dress down um in hopes of uh turning off dark confidant's ability on the next turn because i want to keep telling mana screwed so dress down in case you don't know only goes away on the beginning of your end steps so, or the beginning of the end step so if you cast it on your own end step, it won't go away until that, until their next turn. So um, this is a little cutesy play, but I think it's worth it to try to screw over Dark Confidant's draw ability and keep Talon out of luck. Talon wisely uses the card Days, uh, which is nice to see Days gone. I will say that, uh, and the fact that Talon is like stuck on mana means that it's probably not going to hurt him very much. Uh, except for there's the uh, Mountain off the Dark Confidant. So uh, Bob's going to beat down for two. Uh, which brings me to 17 because I fetched at one point. Uh, and yeah, the, the days that ended up, yes, actually mattering because they Talon did manage to draw the mountain. All right, here's the duress. Let's see what we're working with here. I drew a watery grave, which is fine. I don't know, my hand is just like so unimpressive here. Uh, okay, so there's a the spell pierce. So now the spell pierce has been cleared and days has been cleared. So all of the card, there's no interaction this turn at least. Uh, I, there's no win for me either this turn, which is disappointing. But the cards that I'm worried about out of, out of Talon at this point are Flusterstorm, Envelop, and the Rebs. So Red Elemental Blasts. Let's see what's going on here. I, I'm reading Chill again and just kind of being amazed at how wonderful Chill is uh, in this matchup, even though it doesn't really do anything. Taking two more from Bob. Uh, okay, they got uh, Talon got Thought Scour off the Bob as well. Drew an Island. My hand. This uh, <laughs> this has been like pretty really 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 bad draw. I'm just not really getting anything. I'm drawing a bunch of lands in a row. Um, I have four mana. I put Luris into my hand right because my my deck is not functioning right now. Uh, Luris should be pretty good right. Box. Uh, Blocks a Dark Confidant. It lets me start playing stuff out of the graveyard, particularly right now, Bloodstained Mire. Um, but yeah, no, this is just like feeling like an abysmal horror show where my deck isn't functioning, but neither is my opponent's, so I'm not dead yet. Uh, reveals a Monastery Swift Spear off the top. Uh, uh, yes, I am Dirtling. This is not Pioneer, Justin. This is Vintage Rotisserie Draft, um, which is, again, a really powerful format that's wonderful and maybe you'll uh, decide to start playing it someday so talon draws a card and just i guess thinking about whether to cast a monastery swift spear into a chill which has to feel like the worst feeling in the world uh but yeah this is a this is i think a classic example of neither deck really doing anything which is a wonderful feeling um, I, I don't know, at some point you have to just like wonder why you're, uh, <laughs> wondering, uh, wondering why the, why I'm not casting the Gush, and it's just like, I keep drawing lands, I'm not going to cast a Gush to do nothing, plus if I ever do draw a, a Doomsday, I feel very dumb having wasted the Gush, so. 
Hey, Snapcaster Mage. Probably into a Thoughtseize or Inquisition. Yep. Taking the Lurus, I assume. So I spend three mana. I spend my entire turn doing nothing. They spend their entire turn uh, playing a Snapcaster Mage. There goes the Lurus. It's just really like. This is why. Uh, this is why magic is really the most fun thing, what fun esport to watch, for situations like this where everyone just passes the turn. And I drew another island. Wonderful. All right, at this point I have five mana. Like I should be able to do something with that. Wish claw into doomsday into gush. But I mean I'm not. I have no protection. Um, doesn't feel super good. And and that this is what I'm thinking at this moment. I'm just like, what do I do here? Like, do do you go for it? Do you not go for it? The only, there's not a lot of cards you are that worried about. It's literally Flusterstorm. I think is the only one that really gets you. But I'm also not under any real pressure either. Like, obviously Bob is kind of like tangential pressure because I'm taking additional cards every turn. Um, but I mean, if I had a pack negation in my hand or a duress, I would be like, go all speed. Let's let's just win the game. Uh, I'm also getting close to just casting Ad Nauseam, right? I could go cast Ad Nauseam right now, but I have no backup at all. Um, and I'm at 13 life, but next turn is probably the last turn I could realistically cast out Ad Nauseam with Prophet. I probably draw like, I don't know, 1.2 cards per life on, in this deck. So Ad Nauseam still at this point would draw me like, I don't know, seven or eight cards, but it's getting to the point where it's very scary. The most expensive card in my deck left Let's see. I don't think I brought in Stunning Reversal this matchup. So I think Ad Nauseam and Gush are both gone. So it'd be just the three mana slot are the only cards I'm really worried about. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it seems like Ad Nauseam is still an option. It's not a great one, but it's still an option. All right, there I am casting a Gush. Just a just a Gush the Fairway. Pay five mana and draw two cards. But... I did draw a Dark Ritual, which is nice. There's a Takanuma, which could actually see use of it here. I can get back the uh, the Luris. Takanuma was in the deck as a cuter kind of play earlier, where uh, when I only had the Thassa's Oracle as the only win con, if somebody managed to mill the Thassa's Oracle, I would have lost the game without a Takanuma. So it was part of a Doomsday pile, or part of a non-Doomsday win uh, with Thassa's Oracle. So we're at six mana. 7-8 mana with the Dark Ritual, 9 theoretically with the Chrome Mox. Uh, this might be a time to just Wish Claw into Ad Nauseam. But like passing them a Wish Claw also feels incredibly bad. So I'm 1 mana away from Takanuma into Lurus unless I Dark Ritual first. So I think that's what's happening here, is it's Dark Ritual into Takanuma into Lurus, which would then let me play... I don't even know, Dress Down or something out of the board this turn. This whole situation just feels terrible. Like, I'm just, like, sitting here feeling like, how, how am I losing this matchup when nothing is happening and I'm not doing anything? Uh, okay, no, so I'm using the using the Wish Claw Talisman. I am enthralled to find out what I go look for. I mean, Yawgmoth's Will is a pretty good find at this point. There's enough stuff going on. But this all this all, this feels like a losing line, right? If they just counter the Yawgmoth's Will, like, what are you even doing? I also don't have a way to get Yawgmoth's Will back from the yard other than Doomsday. Uh, I'm also like incredibly scared of uh, opposition agent at this moment, so I have to uh, like the fact that they only have two mana open makes me feel far more comfortable about going for it. Uh, because I can actually use the Wish Claw, right? Like next turn is probably when Wish Claw ceases to work. But there's an Arcane Denial. Okay, that's there's a hard counter spell I'd forgotten about. Uh, but I mean, drawing two isn't bad, so I will take that all day. Uh, being able to, like, I'm not excited about Yawgmoth's Will being gone, but being able to draw two cards in this situation is great. And there's not like a Silver Bullet with Wish Claw can go fine. It makes me lose the game. Obviously, Wish Claw can go find Opposition Agent, but he has to do that on his own turn, because Wish Claw can only be used on your own turn. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to take six here ish, probably, going to two. But unless there's a literal Lightning Bolt, I don't think I lose. Interestingly, this deck can't actually win if you're at one life, uh, because if you're at one life, Doomsday kills you and Death Wish kill you. So, uh, the deck has to stay above two life. 
Vivian at one is the same as Vivian at zero with this deck. Lightning Bolt is a bit of a pain given that there's a chill, but still three mana isn't that hard to get to. But yeah, there's like at this point I'm like very far behind. I feel like I'm gonna be I feel like I'm dead already. Uh and there's a good chance that I win, but there's also a very good chance that I do nothing. So I guess end of turn I'm gonna Takanuma just to get back Luris. It's better than a Takanuma in my hand at this point, so. Plus I can mill some good cards, which would be nice. Although I guess maybe using Takanuma is too risky in this spot, seeing as I only have two cards that make you win the game. Uh, since the Yawgmoth's Will is gone, right? I have Doomsday and I have Deathwish. And if both of those cards get milled off Takanuma, I can't win anymore. Um, I guess I could theoretically cast Thassa's Oracle. Um, but since both of them are spells, they can't get put back on my... Like, I can't recast them with anything. There's no recursion in the deck for it. So... Uh, my graveyard is looking pretty stacked. Don't know why I'm looking at my graveyard, but I guess I'm waiting on Talon to do stuff, so. I'm going to jump forward here. As exciting as this game really is. Looks like Talon is using the Wish Claw Talisman, which is great. Uh, again, I don't know what he's finding like ancestral is an option but i don't think that's good enough um if i were in his spot i would probably pick fluster storm but i also probably just wouldn't use wish claw talisman uh, finding opposition agent is also something that is not terrible here but again i think all of those are worse than just not giving me back a wish claw talisman Thought Scour targeting himself, it looks like. So Croxa and Claim to Fame. Pretty sure that Thought Scour is not the card that was found there. Ragavan. Maybe Ragavan was the card found off of the Wish Claw. I mean, it does exile top of my luck. It does deal me... Oh, okay, no, that's actually just lethal, right? Because the monster is his beer. So yeah, uh, <laughs> Wish Claw into lethal is pretty good. So I guess that's a reason to do it. Cool. So Talon found the line and killed me, which is exciting. Um, so looking at this again, I don't know, Douthy Voidwalker is probably a card that I shouldn't heap in the main deck. Uh, as bad as these other things were... Okay, Collector Brutality I bring in, which makes sense given all the counter magic that's been going on here. Um, also, Collector Brutality is just good against all these creatures. These are all like tiny creatures. I don't know why Collector Brutality wasn't in the first place, but that would be a good choice. Let's see. Dress Down is a card I could see taking out here. Uh, the Dathy Voidwalker again. Looks like Cabal Ritual. That's the choice. We're going to slow that down even more. Yeah, this feels very wrong to me. Um, but again, I, maybe I'm still thinking I, I need to be slower. And if I am going to be slower, I might as well be substantially slower. Uh, Cabal Ritual was a card that I put in the list because I found myself ad nauseum in drawing 20 cards and then not being able to get to three mana to cast Yawgmoth's Will. So I, it's literally a card that's only there to win with an ad nauseum. It's not a card that is needed to go off at any point or really uh, it's it's... It forces you to get two for one against counter spell decks, so I can see why it's a card that, in that moment, I was thinking isn't very good. All right, so this hand is functional. It's not exciting by any means. There's no disruption. Uh, drawing the Thassa's Oracle feels terrible. Um, I could cast a Doomsday in turns two, but it's probably not good enough. I don't know. I would not cast it, but I would cast the Wish Call Talisman all day. I think that if I'm Talon, I'm for sure... Uh, bringing in the, the artifact hate in game two. I think it's wrong, but I think given how game one went, it makes a lot of sense to have it in there. And end of my turn one, casting Ancestral, targeting himself, which doesn't feel great for me. Uh, but on the plus side, Talon's going to have 10 cards in hand, so there's a good chance that he has a discard anyway. This is the weird thing about VRD compared to Vintage. Like in Vintage, you should be like, oh god, they have 10 cards in hand. They're, like, stacked and going to win the game immediately. Here it's like, yeah, probably, but uh, they won't be able to use all those cards this turn because there's, there aren't enough Moxon. Uh, in fact, Talon has no Moxon. Uh, 
So like, maybe, maybe you won't discard, right? But it's kind of like by playing a bunch of crappy creatures. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. I, I'm just like, the, the top tier of cards in VRD is bonkers. And it's super exciting because it is, uh, because those you get to play with Instant Recall. But your bottom end is just so much worse, where you're playing cards like Envelop and things like that that just like don't, that are fine, but are are not um, are not the kind of density of power that you see in Vintage. Talent changes up, goes for a swamp instead of the island there. Thought sees is strong. So I assume Thought sees into a red uh, aggressive creature would be the worst case scenario for me. So like a Ragavan and a Thoughtseize would be pretty strong. Um, Thoughtseize plus uh, a like draw spell, like a, a, a Serum Visions or something, would be not great for me, but not terrible. Getting Thoughtseize here kind of sucks, but my hand is just like really dense with threats. So like I would take Gush, um, but I think I think Gush is better than other people think it is. So I think it's understandable other people don't take it as much, but like. What do you take? Right, you take a Doomsday, and I still have the Yogg Muscle to get back. You take the Yogg Will, and my it doesn't actually do anything because I have all the cards already in hand. You take a Thassa's Oracle and force me to go for the Death Wish line, or have to use the Doomsday to get Thassa's Oracle back. Like everything there is recursion. Gush is the like least replaceable card in this hand, or the card that like is least redundant, um, and it's a card that opens up the Doomsday, so it's like a pretty good combo there. But it's also a card I can't cast with I have right now. Right, I only have I only have two lands. I only have one island. So Gush is like. Not going to be doing gush things anytime soon. Chrome Mox feels like the weakest choice to me, uh, but maybe like given how mana light my hand is, it's a reasonable call. I don't know. Thought season this hand is like both really good because all the cards are very good, but also just like not very relevant for how the match is going to play out in my mind. So taking Yogwell I think is reasonable there. It does shut off my recursion for later things as well. Uh, though my deck doesn't have a way to recur Yogmoth's will other than Doomsday, so. There's an earlier build of this where I had Snapcaster Mage in it and used Snapcaster Mage sometimes to use Logwell, but it just ended up being slower than the deck needed. Um, but yeah. Uh, Hope of Garriper, real, real good. So uh, being able to just like turn off my opponent's six counter spells or whatever they have can be really strong. Um, I assume that Talon doesn't have Embrace Shield Breaker and all of the artifact removal or or a lightning bolt in game two or three. Uh, so if that's true, then Hope of Gearper can win the game, right? Like, it's just, it, I will get there to the point where I don't, I can just win and they can't interact with you at that point anymore. I think Hope of Gearper is an underrated card. Obviously, Xanded Swarm used to be really strong in Legacy. Uh, Xanded Swarm can't really function here because the decks that run a lot of green don't need that effect. And splashing into additional colors is a lot more expensive in VRD than it is in Vintage because you can't play all the free counter, all the free fetch lands and stuff. So VRD puts a lot of constraints in the mana that you don't see in other formats. Here we have a uh, Deratero Arcanist, meaning that there's, I'm going to get Thought Seized again next turn if I let it get to next turn. And I draw the best possible draw that I can imagine, which is Dark Ritual here. Um, so I can hit with the Hope of Gearper, probably Wish Claw into Black Lotus so that I can... Or maybe just Wish Claw into like Underground Sea so I can use Gush to open up the Doomsday Pile. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of ways to win from this point. But, okay, cool, Kiroko Gearper hit, which means that now I can sacrifice it and feel very good about myself for not getting counterspelled for the rest of the game. Um, but yeah, Dark Ritual just like opens up all those options. And obviously having the Wish Claw already in play means that I maybe had those already, right? If I like Wish Claw for Black Lotus, I can cast Doomsday into, no, I still need like a draw spell. So I guess Dark Ritual or any draw spell would have done it. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of options. But I assume my Dark Ritual, Doomsday, Wish Claw for a draw spell, maybe? Yeah, Wish Claw for a draw spell would, have, would do it here too as well, because then I can use Chrome Mox as the third mana source. Okay, so using the Underground Sea. This just shows how much I deeply love Gush. Um, because even in places where there's 12 ways to win, I want to use the way that casts Gush. Dark Ritual into Doomsday. This is where I'm like, I don't know how to resolve Doomsday and Cockatrice. It's really hard. Um, I actually don't, I don't know. I 
know there are ways to use it. I just can't figure out how to use Doomsday and stack the cards on top of the library without my opponent knowing what the cards are. Um, I think that the way to do it is to take all of the cards from your discard pile, put them into your library, and then one by one remove cards from your dis from your library and putting them into your graveyard, and then arranging the cards in your deck. Uh, I haven't done that <laughs> when I played this deck at all. I just built the little stack in front of my opponents and told them what the cards were in it. But if you have to do a pass the turn pile on Cockatrice, it seems like it would be abysmal and a really high chance of screwing it up in a way that you would never do in paper. So I have luckily not had that matter um, because the people where I did screw it up, I just like explained to them what happened. And they said, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then we just I won the game. Um, but yeah, it's it's... It's just really horrendous. I think it only happened against Brandon, uh, and after that point, I just started building them like this in front of my in front of my opponent and showing them what I have. So here's the pile. Uh, it's going to be Black Lotus. Let's see. I'm going to gush into Black Lotus Gitaxian Probe, then Gitaxian Probe into Serum Visions, uh, Serum Visions into Sleight of Hand, Sleight of Hand into Pact of Negation, because I still have one additional mana up. So. That gives me the uh, then I then I have two mana for the Thassa's Oracle afterwards. So, all right, emptying my library. I'll be at ten life here, so the Gitaxian Probe will cost me a life. I also have a Pact of Negation up at the very end in case of something. I don't even know what it could be. Um, like Ancestral Recall would be very good against me, but <laughs> okay. So here's Talon is scooping and showing me the Cremate, Days, Envelop, Arcane Denial that are all in hand. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty good to be able to not have to worry about counter spells in this moment. So it is nine forty-eight. We can definitely get at least another match in here. Uh, I did promise Steven that if he hung out, I would watch his match here with everybody, and we can talk through how that one went. Uh, so let's see. Let's cut over to that match. Yes, we can watch Steven, and uh, of course we're not going to spoil the match, right, Steven? So, uh, no, uh, uh, if anyone is doesn't get the joke, I went 6-1 with this, and we've already seen me lose against Brandon. Um, so all these matches are going to be wins, which feels great for me to watch. But, whoa, slow it down, slow it down there. Uh, this one I forgot to start recording until we were on turn one, so... Before we go to the actual match, let's go over to deck list a minute. Here is the beautiful deck list of mine, uh, but the one that we're going to care about here is this. What was siphonated? Zerda? No. Here it is. This is Steven's deck list, and let's scroll down and take a look. So Steven was way down the table from me. Uh, Steven was also the only player that was in black for a minute there, and by in black I mean had signaled that they were in black. I don't remember why. Oh, because he, he took a ruby jet he was at the end and took a ruby jet, so I was like, okay, Steven's probably going to pivot into black at some point here. Uh, but I thought we were decks were different enough that I wasn't particularly worried about having to fight over things. Um, so the, the deck itself uh, is not particularly aimed towards my deck. I will say there's cards that are super annoying to me, right? There's like, uh, there's the Spirit of the Labyrinth uh, that can definitely affect me. Uh, there's there's a, a ton of pressure early on, right? Lelia uh, is, I think, one of the best cards in VR, VRD right now. Excuse me. But um, Spirit of the Labyrinth is really good against me. Uh, there's the Aven Mind Sensor is really strong against me as well. So there's like a lot of cards I'm scared of, uh, but the deck is not, it's not one that I have to worry about cards in hand ruining my day. Yeah, Thalia is another great call. Thought Not Seer can be pretty annoying, but a lot of this is a little slower, right? So it's not stuff I have to really focus on. There is an Ulamog out of the board, so I can't go for Brain Freeze shenanigans in game two. And Maddening Hex out of the board is a card that I probably can't beat once it resolves, so I have to try to just accelerate and try to win the game fast. But there's not a lot of pain or not a lot of punishment for me accelerating, right? There's not a lot of things that are going to make me have to slow down in the way that counter spells do. Counter spells, it's, I feel like this deck has two kind of ways to beat decks after sideboarding, right? You can either accelerate and just like I'm going to go as fast as I can and try to get even faster in game two, 
uh, or I'm going to slow way down in order to beat your counter spells. And this is one that I do the first, for sure. Um, I uh, Steven's going to be siding out the Source of Plowshares on Holy Heat, like all of these dead cards against me, and just bringing in um, anti-storm cards and bringing in Ulamog and Trinisphere and like all these things that really mess up my deck. So I just need to go faster and try to win on turn two. Um, but we'll see how and if that happens. So, um, so let's start off where we are. My hand, uh, I went Island Go on turn one. Uh, my hand is pretty okay. It's not ridiculous by any means, uh, but having an offer you can't refuse feels very good, and having a Doomsday feels incredibly good. Steven starts off with the turn one uh, Thalia, which makes my deck look substantially worse. Um, but that's so it goes, uh, as Vonnegut would say. So let's pick up where we are. We have, uh, we, I mean, having the Thalias feels really bad. Uh, trying to cast Mental Note to Thalia apparently worked somehow. I uh, Maybe Steven forgot. Oh no, I'm casting response to the Thalia, I'm sorry. So that was turn one, I went Island Go, Steven cast Thalia. I responded by Mental Noting myself, uh, exile, or discarding Duress and Sleight of Hand. So those are great cards to have in the graveyard. It means that if I do manage to resolve Yogmas Will, I can keep going. But Thalia is a card that is super annoying to play against, right? It just like slows everything down. We saw what it did when I played against Dovin in, in that first game uh, against Brandon. Um, it just completely shuts my deck down. And there are lines where you can win, right? Like against Dovin, I was able, I should have been able to win the game there. Uh, against Thalia, I should be able to win the game, assuming that it can go long enough. Um, I play Underground Sea and just pass the turn. Uh, I don't, I can't cast anything in my hand. An offer you can't refuse is left up, I guess, but I can't imagine actually casting that on anything Steven casts. Um, we'll see. Uh, Steven does also have the Strip Mine Crucible combo, which is really bad against me, or really good against me, but really bad for me. Hey, Darlene, how you doing? I see that, uh, that Darlene has changed her username to actually be her real name now. It's impressive. Always exciting to see a Twitch employee badge show up in chat. So here on turn two, I'm just casting a Knight's Whisper, I assume. I mean, I could put Luris into my hand because uh, this deck, this game for sure is a game where Luris is going to be strong. Um, but Luris is not great given that, uh, given that Steven still has all of his hate in, all of his like, Prismatic Ending, Source to Plowshares, Unholy Heat, like a million things that kill creatures. So exposing a creature that I don't have to, um, given that my deck has no creatures in it, feels a little stupid in game one. So, Yeah, Darlene, that's exactly what's happening. We're, uh, let's jump over. Or we're, we're talking about my this deck that I played in a tournament. Uh, it ended up going 6-1 and winning the tournament, but we're, I'm watching all the matches afterwards. So Steven's actually in the chat here as well. Uh, he's the, my opponent in this one, and we are in game one. Uh, Thalia is a card that taxes all my spells and makes my deck basically run incredibly slowly, so that's why everything in this match is going to feel a little constipated from my side of the board. So Steven passes it back after beating Nami for two. There's not a lot of clock going on over there. Um, uh, paying one mana to get a ruby out is not great. Um, it's obviously like not the thing he's looking to be doing. He's looking to be beating down the creatures, but his hand is actually functioning pretty anemically, I assume, because he doesn't have any red mana. Uh, so this turn, I put a Luris into my hand um, because there's just not a lot else my deck is doing at this moment. I just need to be like keep hitting land drops and building up to the point where I can uh, use Dark Rituals and Cabal Rituals into a Yawgmoth's Will. And I think that's that's I still am trying to go a storm win through Thalia, which is usually an incredibly losing battle. But if Steven doesn't put pressure on me. It's something that could get me there in the very late game. I'm just getting very lucky based on the fact that he only has one one land. So Professional Facebreaker is a card to be reviewed in, online that was obviously very strong. Uh, it puts a lot of pressure on and generates mana, which are the two things I don't want to see coming out of him. Um, there's a Strip Mine. Strip Mine into uh, blowing up one of my lands is the exact opposite thing of what I said I need to be doing, which is hitting land drops and generating slow value. Um, but my deck doesn't have a lot of other choices in this situation. So uh, I just, I think I can still win through the strip mine if I can hit another land drop, play the uh, the Wishclaw or Luris this turn, and then the turn after that, I think there's a, I think I can win if he basically draws air and doesn't have anything going on, or just plays like another dumb creature, right? If like 
if there's a Aldrazi Displacer or something that gets played, uh, I have a chance of winning from this spot. So that's where my head's at. I'm just like, this is this is definitely like a turn one Thalia makes this a hard matchup to win, but there's a chance that I can still come claw my way back from it. Um, if kind of Steven doesn't have a nail in the coffin here. So we'll see if that happens. So Steven is uh, thinking of uh, yeah, so this is, Steven, this is still, uh, or sorry, Justin, this is still game one. Steven has resolved a strip mine and taken me off mana, but this is the game with a turn one Thalia, which is obviously really strong against a Storm deck. Uh, there's also some pressure just getting put on. I'm, I've been pretty lucky in that there hasn't been a lot of follow up to that turn one Thalia because Steven's been stuck on mana. But now we see a Crucible of Worlds. So Crucible allows him to replay the strip mine. And given that I'm strip locked, I, every turn I'm going to be losing a land. Uh, it's going to be really hard for me to try to find a win from this point. Uh, so he plays a strip mine. Strip mine's my swamp. And next turn he'll be doing the same thing. So I have to see if I can draw something. I don't even know what I'm looking for at this point. I guess I could go search for the Witch Claw into a Black Lotus, which gets me up to five or four mana. I don't know. There, there's just like not a lot of ways to win from this point. Uh, I could Yawgmoth's Will playing a land out of the graveyard uh, and then play the Black Lotus and have three mana. Yeah, there's there's just like so little opportunity here. I think I'm two mana short of being able to win there. So uh, I just concede because trying to win through that strip mine. So let's pause and take a look at sideboards a minute. It looks like here, Steven again has the Maddenate Hex, Trinisphere, uh, and... Chalice of the Void could be very strong against me on zero or on one. Um, Ulamog probably comes in given that I have, uh, yeah, <laughs> Yawgmul <laughs> into, uh, into a land is like shockingly good in, in these matchups. Uh, yeah, okay, also bringing the Endless and Hearse. That's, a, that's a, a pretty strong one. So yeah, there, there's all sorts of stuff coming in for Steven. I assume all of the uh, removal spells are coming out. Lurus is the only card that I really have to worry about. Uh, and in game two, I don't. I'm not going to be bringing in the creatures, so I doubt the Voidwalker is one that I could bring in. But let's let's see what I actually decide. Um, okay, so Steven puts Ulamog in turn three, game three, but not game two. Interesting. All right, so Collective Brutality I think is a slam dunk. Massacre I think is a slam dunk. Both of them just as creature removal. Uh, the rest of my board is not looking super stellar. Stunning Reversal is a card I can see actually bringing in in this matchup. It's obviously like not. A super exciting one given that there's first strikers on his side of the board um, but i can probably line it up where a standing reversal doesn't actually have me lose immediately um stunning reversal draws you seven cards and leaves you at one life if you would lose the game so it's it also costs four mana so it's pretty easy to telegraph but it's, it's probably a card that like given given the amount of taxes and things it's probably still good enough even though there is a uh even though there is a hate bearer that stops that. Spirit of the Labyrinth in, in Steven's list. Let's see. Okay, I bring in the Ceremonious Rejection just for the Chalice and Trinisphere. Um, the Crucible as well, but that's not the card I'm like the most scared of because again, I'm just trying to accelerate. I, I bring in the Hydroblast here. I don't like that looking at it now, but maybe that's just me being incredibly terrified of the Maddening Hex and wanting it out against it. Um... Yeah, I mean, Ceremonies Rejection is good against Reality Smasher. I, I think these are all, like, reasonable decisions. I just... I, looking at it, I think that I'm scared of the wrong things. Um, but there's a lot of things I can bring in, right? There's, like, Dress Down is also perfectly fine. Like, all these cards are perfectly fine to bring in. There's none of them are slam dunks, right? Um, there's a lot of cards I want to take out, too, so maybe that does make sense, right? Mystic Remora is very bad in this matchup. Uh, the... Imperial Seal is just always the card you take out because it's uh, worse than basically everything. Duress is not particularly strong because all the threats are going to happen on turn one or two anyway. Uh, leaving the Hope of Gearper out. I hope I take out that Mystic Remora. Still have three cards in the uh, three cards over in the main deck. But this is the way I generally sideboard too. Is I just like think of all the cards that I want in the deck drop them all in, and then I remove all the cards I don't want in the deck, 
uh, and then I look at where the kind of the totals are, and sometimes I swap things back and forth across there. Um, but yeah, Massacre feels like it's very strong in this matchup to me. Obviously, like it doesn't kill all the creatures, but it does kill all the creatures that are problematic for me. Like there, there's just like actually looking at it, it kills very few of the creatures, right? There's like uh, Reality Smasher, uh, Reality Smasher, Thought Not Seer, Eldrazi Scourge, Eldrazi Displacer, Bone Crusher Giant. All are things that are going to live through it, but. It is still it's still a card that stops all the taxing creatures. So all the things that I'm pretty scared of here. Let's see, what else do I take out? An offer you can't refuse seems pretty bad. It's obviously a ritual, but it's not a very strong one. Take out the Pact of Negation, take out the Mystic Remora. Let's see, do I decide to leave in an offer you can't refuse? That's the real question here. But yeah, I think I have to take out all the counter magic. Uh, leaving the Hydroblast in when taking out the rest of the counter magic is pretty sus in my mind. Uh, just given that it's really only there for the Maddening Hex. But maybe that's a good enough reason. I don't know. Being able to ritual, being able to tutor for the answer to the card that beats you might be necessary. But I'm like, before game one, I felt like, oh yeah, this is a pretty straightforward matchup. I should be okay. After game one, I'm feeling really scared. And like, maybe I just wildly misjudged the way this matchup is going to go. So, I don't know. Dress Down is another card that I think is really strong in this matchup. I really like it. I think that it's it's a, a bit messed up in this deck. I like generally like all my cards to work perfectly with each other, and Dress Down stops me from being able to win with Thassa's Oracle. Like, if I cast Dress Down, I can no longer win with a Thassa's Oracle line. I have to go for a Storm line. But I think it's still good enough given that it unlocks, it unlocks that ability to happen, right? It, like, shuts down Thalia. It shuts down all these things that really have ruined my deck. All right, down to 40. That should be good enough. Taking out the, the Knight's Whisper as well. That's another card that's just like not particularly strong, but Knight's Whisper offer you can't refuse are both uh, cards that you don't really need in the deck. Taking out the Vampiric Tutor. Interesting. Oh, okay, <laughs> taking out Watery Grip by accident. Okay, cool. So leaving out the Vampiric Tutor, uh, making the deck, again, more silver bullets, but fewer ways to find them. Uh, may or may not be good. I don't know. I think I like that, though. In general, it's like, this deck has enough ways to search for things, and none of my silver bullets are actually just, like, shut down the game silver bullets, right? Uh, it's not like I have a card that is chill against a mono red deck in this matchup. I just have a bunch of, like, good value cards. So having tutors for good value cards is usually not good to waste two cards to find one that's going to get you some net benefit. Um, this hand, perfectly serviceable. I have Hydroblast, I have Massacre. If I didn't want these cards in this matchup, I shouldn't be playing them. So, And whenever you see a Black Lotus, you feel pretty good. So this seems very strong to me. The Conjurer's Bauble is a way to draw into a Doomsday, so it's probably not a card I need right now. I assume I put that one away and keep the Black Lotus. Uh, and I'm just going to be leaning on the back of this Death Wish for this game. We will see, though. Yep, Conjurer's Bauble goes on bottom, and Black Lotus stays on top. Excellent. Serum Visions, substantially worse than a Preordain, um, but still probably good enough given that uh, g given that it's mostly there just to draw the top card after I cast Doomsday. This was a weird draft as well, where basically all the early cantrips went super fast. It's kind of like I took Gitaxian Probe in like round five or six, and then uh, we saw we saw Ponder, Preordain, and uh, brainstorm get taken all three in a row and then serum visions came back the next round and I, or it came back a few rounds later and i just grabbed him so okay drawing the black lotus pretty good now we have island island and that gush is sitting right in the middle of my hand ready to get used so uh obviously dark ritual is very good but probably the dark ritual to cast off of the lotus i'm just looking right here to see if i can win on turn two and steven is yelling at me in voice chat as we're playing being like you can't win on turn two that's not fair so we'll see if I am able to figure out a line to make it happen. But it seems like there should be one. Let's see, two mana, five mana, seven mana. Uh, so then seven mana Death Wish into Tendrils. I don't think there's actually a win here now that I'm looking at it. Uh, I could cast a Massacre for additional Storm count. So let's see, we have Storm of Dark Ritual, Black Lotus, Massacre, Death Wish, Tendrils. That's only 10 damage, so that's not enough to win. Uh, I can't go for a Brain Freeze line here. 
So that doesn't... Uh... Yeah, I believe you're right, Steven. I don't think I actually go for it. Uh... Oh, I also have a gush there. It would be another one, so I'd be up to 12. So I'd basically be leaning on the gush to draw me into uh, three more storm. Four more storm, which is just, like, unreasonable. It's not going to happen. Um, if I happen to gush into Yawgmoth's will, I for sure win the game. So I think that might be what I was thinking of. Just, like, do I pull the trigger on the gush, hoping to draw into Yawgmoth's will, or, like, one of the other, or a tutor for Yawgmoth's will would also do it? Um, which doesn't seem correct to me. I think also if I gush into... Let's see. Can I gush into Doomsday? I have two... Five, seven mana, gush, uh, death wish is down to three mana. Yeah, so yeah, that would actually work. If, if I also hit Doomsday off the gush, it would also win the game. So if I go, if, if you go island, then have seven mana off of the Lotus Land Land ritual, you could gush, draw the Doomsday, cast the Doomsday going down to four mana, then cast death wish going down to one mana death wish finding a draw spell out of my board nope doesn't work i don't have a draw spell on the board uh but this is why i'm like sitting here spending forever thinking about this like if i had to sideboard it out the serum visions or something then i would have a line here where i could get doomsday and win the game uh i am now looking to see if there's a way that i can death wish into vampiric tutor then draw off the gush into the card that i tutor for so if i uh, Death Wish into Vampiric Tutor, cast Vampiric Tutor, I'm down to three mana, then I can gush into the Doomsday, but I don't have a way to draw a spell. So that's where I'm just like trying to figure out if there's a, another line where I Death Wish for Vampiric Tutor uh, for Yawgmoth's Will. Actually, that might work. So seven mana, Death Wish down to four mana, then... Vampiric Tutor down to 3 mana, Gush into the Yawgmoth's Will. That should have, I think that's actually a kill. I think I can vamp into Yawg Will. Let's see, that's one, or Black Lotus Dark Ritual, uh, Gush, Death Wish, Vampiric, Yawg Will, Black Lotus Ritual, Death Wish, uh, tendrils? Oh, I think I'm one mana short, though, because I have to use the Black Lotus for black mana, cast the Dark Ritual, it's up to five mana, and then Death Wish, I only have two floating after the Death Wish. So yeah, if if I could go for Brain Freeze, I would win the game. Uh, but I'm two mana short of going for Brain Freeze, or two mana short of going for the tendrils here, unless I'm miscounting something along the way. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think I am. So yeah, I could I could get the I could get the I have two mana short of tendrils. So if I didn't think that Steven had the Ulamog, I could have gone for a brain freeze kill on turn two. Um, but th this is the game. This is the match where I was just like I need to be streaming. I need to like commentate these games after the fact because there's a million things going on and it's it takes forever to make a decision when you have things like death wish into tutors out of the board. Um, it's just impossible to feel to figure out what the right line is at that point. Also, I'm incredibly glad I didn't go for that now that I'm talking about it out loud because Death Wish exiles itself, uh, and that would mean that I can't recast it again to go find the tendrils. So, good, good, good on me for not trying to do that line. That would be very bad. But yeah, this, this is what I'm thinking about. I'm just like trying to figure out: is there a line that lets me win? So, uh, glad I didn't go for the brain freeze because I was scared of the Ulamog because it also wouldn't have worked because Death Wish would have exiled itself, so. But now that we've kind of like talked through my whole process was and like watched me do math a bunch, uh, hopefully that reveals like why I think this deck is the hardest deck I've ever seen in any format. Um, substantially harder than an EDH deck, substantially harder than any like 75 out of vintage that I've ever seen uh, or any other format for that matter. Because I, like stuff like this, right? Your post sideboard decisions screw up your wishes and you're running ridiculously intensely hard cards to play like gush and vampiric tutors that you just don't see in other formats plus in addition to like the like things that aren't hard once you get used to them but do take a while to learn like when you should 
an offer you can't refuse your own patch negation to generate mana. There's just like weird lines that like you don't see in other places that you have to learn before you can even start walking to the table. And then once you're at the table, you have decisions like this, where you're just like, could I win on turn two with all this like weird nonsense? Um, so I go for a turn to Takanuma into Dark Ritual, into grab Luris, maybe? Yeah, so into grab Luris, cast Luris off the Black Lotus, replay the Black Lotus, which seems like a pretty strong line to me. Um, it's not backbreaking by any means, but with the assumption that Steven's taken out all of his creature removal, I can uh, I can do the line that Steven already mentioned in chat that I do, since he like has a better memory of the stuff than I do, and... Uh, I end up with a Lurus and a Black Lotus sitting in play, and that means I can then use uh, I can then use the Black Lotus every turn. Let's see why is my camera being all weird. Let's see if I can turn it back on. Hmm. There we go. Thank you, camera. Hat tip to Logitech, the non-sponsors of the stream, for giving me cameras that cost eighty dollars. And there's a Thalia, which makes everything slightly more complicated. Thalia adding one to the cost of all of these spells along the way means that those like ridiculously weird wish into tutor lines get a lot more complicated. Cabal Ritual, though, really strong. Uh, it's in this matchup, given where we are in the game right now, uh, Cabal Ritual is basically add one storm count since it's going to cost three mana to generate three mana, but it's one of the cards that does let you break out of Thalia in the very late game once your graveyard does get stocked. Because once you hit threshold with seven cards in your graveyard, I'll be able to cast the Cabal Ritual for three mana, generating five mana, uh, which is a better rate even than Dark Ritual does, which is the two for three, given the Thalia in play. But right now is where, like, looking for a Dress Down would be very strong. Because I could, at the end of Steven's turn, cast Dress Down, shutting off Thalia plus whatever other nonsense comes in, and go off later. But now that Thalia is in play, I have six mana, uh... And I can replay the Black Lotus with one of it, right? So I spend six mana to cast a Gush. Uh, and then feel a little silly because I can't recast the Black Lotus out of the graveyard. So Steven's going to correct me on that and tell me, no, no, no. You have to pay one for it. Uh, so I can't use the Loris this turn, which felt a little bad. Uh, but I think it's worth it to pay six mana to draw two cards, which is apparently what I do in this deck. This is the second time I've cast Gush the Fairway, which just feels very wrong. But, I don't know. Sometimes you pay six mana and draw two cards. Robber of the Rich, Steven's pet card that uh, I complained about a lot and thought it was very bad. Now I think it's just, like, only okay. I think it's mid, as the youths say. Um, being able to hit and draw a card in this case, because uh, or ex be able to exile a card, because I, um, because I have more cards in hand is pretty strong. I'm just leaving my sideboard up. I Cockatrice has weird things where when you look at your sideboard, your opponent knows, so I just like open it immediately and leave it up the whole game. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that Robert the Rich is mid, but it's a good mid. One second, sorry. I'm coming off COVID right now, which is a very exciting time for me. But um, yeah, Robber the Rich, I think in, like, in, in normal play is a very good card, uh, but in VRD it's kind of like a C-level card where it, it'll make the grade and you use it, but it's not something you're ever excited about. So Robber the Rich uh, exiled an Owl and also my deck, which feels pretty good. Uh, I am not at the point where I can double gush, but I can cast a three mana Wish Claw Talisman after casting a Black Lotus out of my graveyard. So. Uh, I am setting up for the turn after this to be the one that I go off, even through the Thalia. Because I'm going to have 3 mana off the Lotus, plus 4 mana, 5 mana off the new land, uh, then 2 more mana off the Lotus cast out of the graveyard, so 7 mana that I have. Then with the 7 mana, I should be able to find something that does something. I still only have 3 cards in graveyard, so we're not going to see a Cabal Ritual go Robert the Rich isn't drawing cards anymore uh, because Steven has more cards in hand than I do. 
I don't know why Steven chose not to attack with the Thalia there. It does have first strike. Um, maybe, maybe it's a Thalia stops the Lurus from attacking. That, that makes sense. Lurus uh, has lifelink, so if a Thalia gets through, um, Lurus won't be able to attack. Or Lurus would be able to attack, which would actually generate one life back for me. So leaving Thalia back is just a way of saving it. Saving one additional life. I think it was seven mana. I don't know how to win from here. Let's see. I go seven mana, search for something off Wishclaw. Ah, uh, that makes everything very easy. So I, now I can collect a Brutality to kill a Thalia, and I can't imagine I don't win from this point, but we'll see. Collected Brutality can also check Steven's hand for an instant or sorcery. I don't think that is worth it, but I'm looking at the list right now. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it to check, um, but we'll see. Counters and gains three of that four back. Yep, that's exactly right. So, Collective Brutality. Uh, it might be worth it, actually, to discard these cards just to get up to Threshold. So, let's see. If we're at, we're at three in the graveyard right now, there's going to be four off the Black Lotus, five off the Collective Brutality, and then I could throw two additional ones away. I also have the Massacre in hand. Maybe I should just Massacre here. That seems better. I don't know why I'm not just casting that card. I have a Swamp, he has a Plains. I don't know, Massacre seems much better than Collective Brutality here to me. Hydro Blast doesn't do anything. That's a card you could easily throw away. See, I think Collective Brutality throwing away the two cards actually might be better than casting them. No, 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 no. I should for sure throw away the Hydro Blast uh, to, to add two to the Threshold count, and then cast Massacre to add one to the Storm count. That's, I think, the, the final line I'm settling on. It is a little interesting. Yeah, it should have done it in a different order, though. I should have cast the Massacre first. Oh, Massacre killed my Lurus. So I guess if I'm scared of potentially not winning here, then I should not cast the... Or I should, then I should... Then, then it explains why I'm scared. Um, the Aven Mind Sensor is very annoying uh, because it makes my Wish Claw Talisman substantially worse. Uh... But again, if I'd done this in the other order, then I could... Hmm, what does that do? If I cast Massacre first, it still doesn't force Steven to put the Avon Mind Sensor in play, but it might trigger it if I go, like, Massacre into Wishclaw Talisman. Uh, I think Steven would then pull the trigger on the Avon Mind Sensor, and then at that point I could... I could Collective Brutality... But this is all, like, a lot easier knowing that that card's already in Steven's hand. So I, I don't know what the right play is in the dark. Uh, but that's, I think, looking at it now, I would... I should just have not been scared and just read through Steven's list a little more. And then, like, what cards am I actively nervous about? Uh, and Mind Sensor would have been at the top of the list. And thought through what the best line is against Mind Sensor. But again, this is hard to do, given that we know Mind Sensor's in his hand. But I think that the right play would have been to cast Massacre right there. And kind of uh, attack with the Lurus, of course, first. Um, force him to block, then use Massacre. Although now that I now that I'm saying this out loud, I, I can't really I can't float the mana from the Lotus in between those two phases, so it makes it substantially harder. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is a super tricky, uh, super tricky decision process because there's like the, the the storm consideration there's the amount of the amount of mana and where to keep the mana phase wise so here i'm using the lotus and then casting the lotus again uh storm count is now up to two off of the collective brutality and a black lotus i'm going to use one of the mana to force steven to play the avon mind sensor the wish claw is not great for me here but i have so many cards i can hit off the top four of my deck and that make me win the game that I just like I figure I can find something to win uh, like there's there's you could easily find four cards that don't win me the game right here but there are so many combinations of cards that have one that I need right like one card out of 20, uh, 24 
or sorry, at four looks at 24, there are something like, I don't know, I bet there's at least eight cards in my deck that win me the game from that spot that uh, that I figured it was worth it. And I, like Steven said, I hit super strong, right? The ad nauseum means that I can't lose effectively. I mean, there of course are ad nauseums that are going to stop me from winning the game, but like I'm at 16 in life. I'm going to draw something like 20 cards here. I don't know my exact... Actually, I can look at my exact number thanks to the beauty of moxfield.com. What is my average CMC in my deck or average mana value in my deck? It is 1.05. So on average, I will draw one card f per life that I have in my deck. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably draw 15 cards. Maybe I'm conservative and only draw 12 or 13. So then here's the Massacre, uh, clearing the... Don't clean the Even Mind Sensor and the Lurus. Adding a Storm again. And then let's fire. That also gets me up to Threshold so that I can fire off the Cabal Ritual into the Ad Nauseum. And I'm, this is an Ad Nauseum with four Storm and five mana floating. It's going to be a pretty hard one to miss from. So, And again, I already have Lethal If... I can use Brain Freeze, but without Brain Freeze, I don't have exactly lethal yet, so I have to go for the Ad Nauseum instead. So this is where we get to play the fun little Ad Nauseum game. And again, the scariest card in my deck, I believe, I just cast Gush already, uh, I've cast Ad Nauseum already, so the highest cost could be four, but I didn't put the Splendor, I didn't put in the four cost, Stunning Reversal, so the highest cost in the deck is three at this point, so I can keep going for a while. There's eight, and again, after casting this, I still can't stop at two, I can't stop at one life. If I stop at one life, I'm dead. I have to stop at two or above because uh, all both my win conditions make me lose half my life rounded up. All right, so not a great ad nauseum, but it's still good enough. I mean, there's there's very few ad nauseums here that uh, that make me not win. I have the doomsday gets me down to two life. And then I can't use the Gitaxian Probe, but I can use the Brainstorm, and that's good enough because I still have two islands in play for the old Gush to win the game. I keep going though because there's not anything that kills me. Uh, at this point, Mark, you need to stop because you're at four and you have three drops in your deck. So please don't draw another card. You could draw Yawgmoth's Will and have a very bad time. Plus you already have the win in like three ways. So just take that. You can Doomsday. I guess I'm scared of... Nope, there's no Rebs in Steven's list. What am I... Uh, a lot of times I'll just like keep drawing until I actually see stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the card is I'm scared of here. I did draw two more cards, which is dumb, but apparently I just got lucky, so I'm happy with that. I don't know why Doomsday into... Uh, sleight of hand doesn't win the game, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe I maybe I already got maybe the Yogwill is already gone. I don't know. I'm for sure overthinking. Yeah, I I am trying to justify a reason why I am not making the wrong decision here. Yeah, that's true. I do mostly also know your hand. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. That, there's there's like so few ways of losing in that spot and drawing two cards there I think is one of them, assuming that I'm not wrong about Yawgmoth's Will. <laughs> yes. That does sound like a thing I would say. Alright, so then let's cast a... Let's cast a Doomsday, and then Steven probably will concede in response. Although we're at five Storm count, so maybe there's a, a Death Wish line. I have... Chrome Mox, which generates one mana. Yeah, uh, mana's actually pretty, uh, mana's pretty constricting here. Because I have five, six mana. Yeah, just six mana to win. Um, Doomsday is the easiest one. We just go Doomsday down to three, then something down to two, then draw the Gush, use the Gush to draw Lotus and, uh, I don't know, something else. And then win the game from there. Lotus into Mental Note, or just cast the Mental Note. I don't know. There's like, this is one of those. You have all the options in the world. What do you? Which one do you pick? 
And in my case, I choose to pick, uh, just make everyone wait around for a little while longer. Okay, there. Let's jump forward and see me cast a Doomsday finally. And then, again, continuing to overthink uh, what the choices are. So I talk through what it is, and I explain the pile. The pile is going to just be uh, Lotus into, uh, or Gush into Lotus into uh, Mental Note, milling the last two, drawing the Thassa's Oracle, casting the Thassa's Oracle. So that's a good enough one. Uh, game three, anything I change? I bring back in, what did I just bring back in? Sorry. Mr. Grimora. Mr. Grimora comes back in on the draw uh, I don't know if that's correct, <laughs> just looking at it, but, uh, it's not horrible. No, it's, it's pretty horrible. I don't like this. Uh, Mr. Grimora is going to be, like, good against the hands so that Steven doesn't do anything, but I think I just was like, that was such a slow game that maybe his deck isn't as aggressive as I thought, or maybe he boards out all of his creatures and came through. I don't know. I don't know why I'm bringing in the Mr. Grimora here, but it feels super wrong to me. Uh, so let's see, what, what do I even, what do I take out for it? Hopefully I take out the Mystic Remora. Yeah, totally agree, Steven. That was a, it felt like your deck just drew, uh, like, like poo-poo. Yeah, turn two Reality Smasher is pretty good. So what do I take out here? Okay, I take out a Night's Whisper. Uh, fine, I don't know. Mystic Remora versus Night's Whisper is pretty, uh, equivalent there. I think Mystic Remora is substantially worse, but I can... I, I can pretend that it's not ridiculous. I think there's reasons why there are, there are some matchups or some uh, some draws that Steven can have where Remora is better. But uh, Mind Twist is a pretty good card. This hand doesn't do anything though, so I'm going to mulligan that apparently by dragging all the cards back to my deck and shuffling and drawing a new one. Weird. Um, cool. Uh, this hand is much better. It's still not good, but it's better. It's going to be really bad if Steven has a Stern Mind Lock. But I don't think I can really play around that. Why don't why do I have seven cards in hand? Maybe that wasn't a mulligan? Maybe... I don't know why that wasn't a mulligan. Uh, drawing the... I think, I think maybe I put the cards in my hand and then we... I don't know. I may have cheated, that's possible. Uh, <laughs> a rematch actually would be pretty fun at this point, now that I don't remember the deck works anymore. But Okay, so Gitaxian Probe into a... Uh, into, I assume, a Mystic Remora. Uh, but his hand is pretty crappy for a Mystic Remora, so maybe I just go into the Conjurer's Bauble, it seems better. Yep, I definitely cheated, so... Uh, or maybe that wasn't a mulligan. Maybe we, maybe we just ch chatted and said, oh, that we, I wasn't supposed to draw yet, and I put the cards back and then drew a new hand because it was before the match. Uh, who's to know? It's impossible to tell. But Yeah, so Contra's Bauble is obviously much better than Mystic Remora here uh, because Mystic Remora is not going to do anything against his deck. He does have a turn two Thalia, which feels pretty bad, especially because I don't know that there's going to be a turn three Crucible, um, but Crucible is certainly in the cards... Uh, there's no strip mine though, so drawing the dark ritual is real freaking good in this moment. Uh, it doesn't immediately make me win the game, uh, especially given the Thalia there, but it does allow for me to next turn cast or to, uh, in a future turn to cast the chain of vapor. Um, I spend two mana to cast it Ristic Remora and just slow down the cha the Crucible. He can cast it if he wants to. <laughs> He strip mines me, which is not a great feel for me. Yeah, this seems like a match that I'm about to lose. I don't know uh, how I win from here, but it's exciting. I'm excited to find out. It is nice that he can't go... <laughs> I do rip, rip well. Uh, it is exciting that I can't... Or it, it's, it's nice that he cannot cast the strip mine and the... Crucible the same turn, right? Because I'll have a Mystic. Uh, I'm gonna let the Mystic Remora go because I want. I need to be able to chain a Vapor, knowing that there's a Strip my Lock coming in two turns. Uh, so yes, I drew perfect in that I draw an Island. But the turn after this is, I think, the one that Steven's talking about in chat, where I draw incredibly well. 
Uh, but you know, we'll play an island means that I can set up for my uh, means I can set up for a gush when I need it on the turn after this. Uh, but this turn, I'm just going to be chain of vaporing the Thalia. Now, of note, in a lot of uh, storm decks, chain of vapor does double duty, where you can bounce your own mox in to be able to gain additional mana. It can end up being mana neutral with my deck, where I can bounce a chrome mox to count as the same mana, but it doesn't ever generate mana in the same way that it does with vintage and uh, some cube decks, because all of my mana sources that are uh, that produce mana have to tap and sacrifice themselves. Robber the Rich exiles in Watery Grave. Um, losing the Ad Nauseam is like honestly pretty bad, but given my life total dwindling at this speed, uh, Ad Nauseam would only draw me like six or seven cards. So it's not great. Um, so yeah, I just have to bounce the Thalia and pray that my deck bails me out somehow. I can Dark Ritual into Death Wish uh, to find something at this point. Um, but yeah, my, my deck is not doing a whole lot. Uh, so if I draw a Doomsday, my deck just wins. Yep, there it is. Yep. So Dark Ritual, uh, then a Dead Draw, and then Doomsday. Ends up saving this game. But yeah. Uh, it's pretty good when your deck hands you a two-card combo over three draws. So. Go Dark Ritual, then cast Doomsday. I don't know what's in Steven's hand, but there's nothing in his deck that stops this situation. So... Because I have the Conjurer's Bubble on top, and I have two islands in play, I should then be able to, uh, I, I should be able to, just draw into a Gush and then Gush into Lotus and uh, some draw spell, Gitaxian Probe. My life's high enough; I'll be at three life after the Gitaxian Probe. Um, so let's see what I end up doing. trying to figure out how to cast a uh how to cast a doomsday <laughs> and i'm just like i uh, screw it here steven let's just uh let me just show you tell you what the cards are that i'm getting but like there's there's so many lines that went off doomsday at this point that i don't i have to like look at his list to make sure there's nothing that's really scary here the only instance that could matter let's see meltdown is a sorcery yeah all these cards are sorceries so even Mind Sensor is the only kind of flash creature that I'm worried about. Uh, and obviously once the Doomsday is resolved, it's very good. If he had a even Mind Sensor in hand at this point, I would lose the game because he could cast it before I cast the Doomsday. and Or in response to the Doomsday, and I would only be able to search and build a pile out of the top four cards in my library and my graveyard. Uh, which, given how good my luck was in this game, might be good enough, but probably not. So yeah, Black Lotus, Gush, Thassa's Oracle are there th are three cards that are relevant in this pile. Um, might as well stick a Collective Brutality and a Gitaxian Probe in there, maybe. I don't know. There's just, like so many ways that could win from here. It doesn't matter. Let's see if I figure out an actual pile. I'm checking the graveyard. This is where like it's it's incredibly easy to to find a pile that wins. It's incredibly hard to find a pile that can win through any possible hate that Steven could have. And that's where it's like staring at lists and being able to play this online is so much different than playing in paper. If I were playing in paper and didn't have access to deck lists in this moment, I would be like fried trying to like jump through all the things. And like, if I were a different type of person that could just like, yeah, I'm just gonna like throw the cards together into a pile and this one will win 90% of the time. That's very different and I've like, probably would enjoy playing this deck in paper <laughs> but in paper it's it, like my personality is not the kind that would be like okay with that right because i if i lost to the card that i forgot about i would just hate myself for the rest of the tournament and it would be really horrible so here's the pile it looks like it's going to be gush into Gitaxian probe sleight of hand then or okay Gitaxian probe and black lotus cast the black lotus Gitaxian probe into the sleight of hand cast the sleight of hand down to two mana and then cast the Thassa's Oracle. So. Yeah, so so fun. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, this deck is really, really strong. Uh, I don't think it's the best deck I've seen in VRD by any means, 
but it is uh, kind of given how screwed up the rest of the draft got and getting cards sniped from under me, I feel very happy with how this deck ended up. Uh, we have time for one more. I'm going to throw another, let's throw another match in here as well. Uh, let's kind of get through. Wait, did I go for it? Oh no, I'm showing a death wish for some reason. Oh, I was explaining how I was trying to win with, with a death wish instead. Um, but let's take a look at one other match tonight. We saw Talon, we saw Ever, we saw Brandon, we saw Steven. Let's watch Steve's match. So Steve, let's jump over and take out the deck list a minute. Oh, Steven had the hex in hand there. That's, that card would be very strong. In case anyone's not familiar with Maddening Hex, this card says every spell you cast, you roll a d6 and take that amount of damage. Uh, and that would be pretty brutal for me. Good night, Steven. We'll chat later, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, let's let's take a look at this match against Stee. I think this one is, nope, this is Talon's list. And, was Stee on Zerta? Nope, that's Jukem's. Stee's on lands, okay, here we go. So this is the, uh, this is the Mystical Dispute deck. These, again, I'm going to worry about the cards that I'm actually worried about in these. There's Hull Breacher, which can be annoying. A lot of my cards draw cards. Notably, Ad Nauseam doesn't actually draw cards. It just puts it in your hand, so this isn't one that's going to be relevant for me. But uh, Time Twister and Wheel of Fortune can really mess up my day by throwing away a lot of cards that I need um, and making it hard for a deck that has a lot of cantrips to sculpt my hand. Uh, they both can just like throw away a lot of that work that I've done. Um, the win condition for this deck is Grindstone and Painter's Servant. So being able to just cast both those spells and then mill my entire deck. Uh, and the subtle win condition of Hulk Reacher plus the wheels uh, empties my entire hand, fills up his entire hand, and makes my day substantially worse. But the relevant interactive cards in this matchup are Mystical Dispute, uh, and Mental Misstep that I have to watch out for. So those are the cards I'm going to be scared of and that I have to worry about in game one at least. Game two, uh, there's not a lot of the sideboard that's particularly relevant. Uh, let's see, Force of Vigor can be annoying, but like all my artifacts just sacrifice themselves off immediately. Um, Stony Silence is a big one though. So Stony Silence out of the board is one that is going to be relevant here. So yeah, let's... Uh, Let's jump over to a game. So, against D, uh, let's see. I roll 17 against the one, which is pretty good. My hand starts off pretty good. I mean, this is three mana. I can have a turn to Doomsday if I want to. Uh, Mystical Dispute won't be relevant at that point. Neither will Meta Misstep. So, I could just cast a Doomsday into Gitaxian Probe on turn two. Um, I. I'm casting the probe, which now that I'm looking at it, I think it's actually incorrect. I think that I should have just gone for the turn two doomsday uh, win because I could doomsday into gush into the win. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I can see why I did this. It's just like an instinctive play of like I want to know what's in their hand. I want to draw a card. I'm going to cast a tax team probe in turn one, but I think it's incorrect that I could have just gone doomsday into the win on turn two. Uh, Playing a, a Water Grave Tapped, of course, not particularly relevant. Drawing the Ad Nauseam is the easy way out of this matchup. It's kind of like the Pull of Ripcord kind of play. Um, I can go turn three, or turn two, tutor for a Black Lotus, turn three, Ad Nauseam, which is almost assuredly going to be good enough in this match. Seeing as I'm going to play, especially, there won't be a Mystical Dispute up. Uh, I'm not playing any blue spells, so I don't worry about that. I don't know. Uh, the Mental Misstep and Mystical Dispute mean that the Doomsday might have been a past the turn pile, but neither of those is actually a stopper for the game winning. I think it's I still I think it's absolutely correct to have gone turn to Doomsday there. I don't know. I I didn't do it, but I think I should have. So Alright, here we have a fast bond. That obviously is an incredibly scary card in this matchup. Uh, the entire engine for Stee is to get fast bond and then Simic Growth Chamber bouncing itself, and then replay it over and over again, costing you one life per land play. But then you get as many land uh, triggers as you need. So for instance, if you have uh, a uh, if you have a Corsair Crufix in play, 
all those don't cost you any life. And then if you have something like a Hedron Crab in play, you can mill their entire library because each time there's a landfall trigger, it causes the other player to mill. Uh, it's a pretty cute engine. It obviously requires Fast Bond and one of those other cards, but like that's probably good enough on its own. Sti has a Summer Bloom on top, which means that he has to stop, which is nice. Uh, it means that I don't immediately lose the game. But yeah, the Fast Bond, Simic Growth Chamber, means that all these Karoo lands that bounce themselves, uh, he has infinite infinite enter the battlefield triggers for lands. So not infinite landfalls, uh, which uh, is pretty good. I mean, th th there are there are outlets that make him win the game with that. So certainly that's an option. Now I can go turn to demonic tutor past the turn, which I think is what you have to do here. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a way to win other than that. God, yeah, looking at looking at kind of what's going on over there, at this point, he has two cards in hand. I know them both. Now there's Mercari, but uh, there's a lot of top decks that just make me lose the game immediately here. I guess not anymore, right? Because now that now that I know the next card coming is Summer Bloom, there's no card on top. There's no card in hand that draws a card, and there's no cards on top that make me that make me lose. Uh, and Steve's not in chat, so I'm actually talking in, or not in voice, so I'm talking in chat here. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to win, and I, there's definitely not, right? Like, I can go Demonic Tutor into Black Lotus into Cabal Ritual gets me to four mana, but that's not enough for the, that's not enough for the Ad Nauseam. There's no way that I have that generates, that generates two mana, um, or that generates four mana out of my deck, right? So I, I think... Finding the Black Lotus off of the Tutor is the best play I have. But let's see. I think for a while, count a bunch of times. I guess I could Cabal Ritual into Dark into Demonic Tutor. It's one mana floating. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's any better options. So I just. Oh, okay. I cast <laughs> Doomsday, uh, and go for a pass the turn pile, presumably. Yeah, I, I don't know what decisions I'm making in this matchup, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's what I do here. So here I build the pile and try to build it into my deck, but I think the deck shuffled or something afterwards. I don't know what happened here. So everything everything got all got all wonky, uh, but I'm trying to build the deck without shuffling, as you can see right there. I think what happens is the cards get listed in the opposite order than they actually are. Um, so the top card actually ended up being the bottom card. And I just had to, we had to talk through it in chat about what happened. But here I'm building a pile that can win next turn. So let's let's look at the pile. There's a Pact of Negation, Sleight of Hand, Gush, Thassa's Oracle, Black Lotus. The play obviously being next turn I'm going to Gush into Black Lotus and uh, Black Lotus and the Cantrip. Cantrip into the Thassa's Oracle and then win the game with the two cards on top. So, pass. I'm at nine life right now. Ste crop rotations at the end of turn. So that's cute. This is actually something that could have made me lose the game because he can crop rotation. And I and there could be a card on top that makes me lose the game immediately, right? Let's see. Finds the Savannah off the crop rotation. Oh, sorry, puts a Windswept Teeth in play. So Windswept Teeth comes into play, gains a life, and allows for another shuffle off of the... Uh, another shuffle. Drew the Breeding Pool for turn. Summer Bloom still on top of Library, shuffling the Windswept Teeth getting to put the Summer Bloom away, looking for, again, something else. I'm not sure what the other card is here, right? I don't know what the card is that Steve is looking for that can win this turn. And yeah, this is where Cockatrice is just a little weird and talking through chat. There's a Painter Servant on top. Uh, Horizon Canopy can draw into Painter Servant, which is good. Um, so if there's a Grindstone in hand, 
Still not enough to win on its own, but theoretically it could get closer. Mystical Disputes in the top is probably not going to be relevant, though. There's the Breeding Pool. Painter Servant. All cards are green, which signals to me that there's a Force of Vigor in hand. Or no, Force of Vigor is in the sideboard. So I don't know why cards have to be green, but uh, for some reason, Stee has made all cards green. Oh, for Green Sun Zenith, maybe. Maybe you can Green Sun Zenith for a non-green creature. So this is where I'm explaining that I apparently drew the bottom card of my library instead. But yeah, this is where trying to play Doomsday on Cockatrice is just abysmal. So yeah, I'm sure I just build the pile here and show what happened. Uh, Stee is incredibly polite and kind and lets me talk through why it happened. I don't know if it shuffled or what happened. Uh, but so here's the actual pile where uh, <laughs> again I'm just trying to like show what happens here um, okay so, so I can talk through I, I we talk through in chat what would happen um, Cool. So, uh, figuring out what, let's jump over to the deck lists again for a second to talk through what I'm worried about. The, the biggest card, of course, is going to be post board uh, Stony Silence. It's potentially damaging for my Black Lotus combos. Uh, it shuts off the Lotus Petal. It's really just like post ad nauseum, you need the artifacts to be able to get the mana. So, if a Stony Silence resolves, it shuts off the ad nauseum lines. There still are ways to make it work, um, notably like just comboing with rituals instead and then using Yawgmoth's Will to replay them, kind of like doing a Past and Flames kill in Modern, but uh, it's not nearly as consistent. The nice thing about Stony Silence is that it also shuts off the Painter Servant combo. So if Stony Silence is in play, it also slows down Steez deck quite a bit, but it's, uh, it's not good for me necessarily. Um, but I think overall, like this matchup feels like it is pretty good for me if Steve doesn't just go off immediately. But let's see what I sideboard here. Uh, the cards that jump out to me are none of them. Uh, yeah, none of these cards really are like, I must have these. Chain of Vapor seems pretty good. Um, Mystic Remora, sure, that seems pretty bad. I bring in Collective Brutality. This is still the point where I think Collective Brutality hits any non-creature spell in the hand. So uh, that's obviously not true. It only gets instances of sorceries, but that's the reason I bring it in. I also bring in Stunning Reversal. This is a card that I think can be really good. Um, but yeah, still just complaining about Doomsday in chat. Uh, Stunning Reversal I think could be really good. Given that there's a Hall Breacher in Steez deck, I actually don't love bringing it in here. I think that card might be a little too cute by half uh, in this deck, but I just had to try it. I bring Dress Down in it as well. That's interesting. Um, bringing out the Mystic Remora so far. I don't know what else I'm bringing out. Dress Down does seem pretty good against a Painter Servant combo. Uh, it seems good against the Hull Breacher. There's a lot of reasons why I think Dress Down is reasonable here. But really, the, the tough part is what cards to take out. So taking out the Wish Claw is okay. I think Wish Claw is probably better than the uh, than the Imperial Seal, but given that there's a Stony Silence that's probably going to happen, and that there's a Force of Vigor that could very easily happen, I think Wish Claw is a fine card to take out. But yeah, taking out both of them is also very reasonable. Um, I just there's just like again, this is a matchup where I don't have a Silver Bullet that I'm tutoring for, uh, and tutors are of course good. But having slow tutors like the Wish Claw Talisman and the Imperial Seal are not the cards you're looking for. So, Dress Down does not stop Painter. Interesting. Huh. That seems wrong to me, but I trust you in chat uh, that have actually seen the interaction before. 
Yeah. No, I totally, I totally believe that. I would, I would have to actually pull up the layers chart to, to like argue with this fact. So I, I trust that that is correct. But at the time, I thought it did. So that's uh, that, that explains it. Also, I think it's, it's probably good enough to have the dress down just for the whole breacher anyway. So. But yeah, of course, it like it makes sense that you need to know what color things are before you can know uh, before you can apply an ability that removes things. So cool. So uh, this is a turn one. Uh, that's not a kill, but it's pretty freaking good. So turn one, Black Lotus into Cabal Ritual, going up to four mana, tapping into Mind Twist for four cards out of my opponent's hand. Pretty strong. So obviously. Steve gets to start with two lands and an exploration in play, but no other cards in hand. I feel pretty okay with that. My hand is very anemic, but I think that my hand can draw into a win faster than he can. Um, and my hand isn't doing anything else anyway, so. Yeah, Mind Twist is a, it's a pretty strong one, I would say. Overall, uh, uh, playable at least. Although, if we do look at kind of the history of, of VRD, it's my twist doesn't always get drafted like it's obviously very strong but it's only been drafted 60 out of 73 drafts and its lotus score is 64 uh it usually shows up early though it shows up around round 11 but there's just some drafts where nobody wants it because i think if you're just a generic like splash black deck you probably don't necessarily need a mind twist in your deck if you don't have the fast mana Uh, the Green Sun Zenith should be in the... Oh, no, Green Sun Zenith is one of the cards discarded, I think, is the reason why it's there. Yeah, it's one of the cards discarded from hand. Uh, I'm looking at my graveyard because I drew a Yagamoth's Will. Uh, I have a Black Lotus and a Cabal Ritual, but no payoffs. So this is where now uh, a Wish Claw Talisman would be incredibly good. It just win the game. So I'm just looking for some kind of payoff here. I have all the mana in the world. Um, I'm next turn I'm gonna have four, down to one, up to four, up to five. Hitting the Bloodstained Mire was very good there because now I can draw into, now I can get the black mana for the uh, underground sea. Casting a Courser is pretty strong. That's obviously one piece of the combo that Steve is going to be looking for here. I don't think Steve had a wasteland. No, Steve doesn't have a wasteland. Steve does have a Urza Saga. There's a Once Upon a Time on top, uh, which is, I think, really good. I know other people disagree and don't think it's quite as strong. I think it's uh, up there with the top tier blue ca blue cantrips. But I Bloodstained Mire for the Watery Grave. Again, not worried about Mind Twist, or Mind, uh, uh, not worried about the Wasteland. Uh, Mental Note is fine. I'm excited to uh, fill up my graveyard, given that I have a Yawgmoth's Will in hand. There's a good chance that this lets me just go off. But we'll see what I mill. So, Brainstorm and Chrome Mox. Not a guarantee of a win yet. So I think that I have to just pass the turn. I'm not probably going to lose next turn, so it seems worth passing. Um, I could right now cast Yagmoth's Will into Black Lotus, into Wall Ritual. Like, there, there's a, in a Chrome Mox, like, there, I can make a bunch of mana. I do have an offer you can't refuse, so I could uh, also uh, either protect myself from a, from a win that's coming from the other side of the board, or use that as a, as a ritual next turn as part of this Yagmoth's Will cut line. Because I could. Offer you can't refuse my Chrome Mox to generate a mana, um, or cast it on something before casting the Yagmas Will. But once upon a time, Hull Breacher sitting on top is a pretty strong one. Fast Bond sitting on top. Steve's hand is pretty empty. My, I mean, putting some pressure on my life total, but not nearly enough to be able to stop me from doing anything. I just keep drawing mana, which is not great. But five mana into Yagmas Will, I think I have to try to go for it this turn because I know that there's going to be a Hull Breacher coming. Although, no, Steve's stuck on blue, so no blue mana available. I still think that it's worth going for. I don't know. I think this is like very arguable whether this is correct or not. I don't have a guaranteed win, but I do have a brainstorm and a mental note. Um, 
Mental Note's very bad after Yawgmoth's Will because it just like excels two cards off the top of your library. But um, I probably can find this. I mean, a Stormwind should be fine. It's really just like putting a whole lot of pressure on this Brainstorm. Uh, I definitely should not have played a land if I did. Yeah, I put an Underground Sea into play. I shouldn't have done that because I could have used the Yawgmoth's uh, Bloodstained Mire. Uh, I guess it doesn't particularly matter because the Brainstorm, I don't, I'm not going to be able to find additional cards. And brainstorm into mental note. It's the same thing anyway. If I do need to look for one more. I think I'm trying to figure out if an offer you can't refuse can be used defensively or used as a ritual here. But storm's at two. We're going to add some blue mana and pray to the brainstorm gods. And that's more cantrips. Put back two cards that don't do anything. Yeah, this hand doesn't seem to be coming together in the way that it should. And now my graveyard is empty enough. Uh, I think I think I talk through the cabal ritual and we get the, we get the proper amount mana out of it that I should have cast in the beginning. Because if I cast Cabal Ritual out of the graveyard, it would have generated five. So I think we just talked through that and it's fine. This is, again, sloppy play. But playing with people that understand how this works are okay with it. Maybe not, though. Maybe I just uh, accept that I did it wrong for the Cabal Ritual. Here's me milling those two cards and drawing off the mental note like we talked about. Draw an Ad Nauseam. So I currently have... Uh, one, two, three, four mana, five mana. So I have a Cabal Ritual, but I mean, all of my mana producers are gone. So if I add Nauseam right here, it doesn't actually have the ability to win this turn because there's not enough mana in the deck to make it happen. So I'm pretty sure I go for this, but this is just super wrong, right? Because I can add Nauseam. Uh, I'm guaranteed to take three damage next turn. I think I should just cast the chrome mox out of the graveyard mind twist my opponent for one and then pass the turn i think that would actually be the correct play in this situation but i'm so locked into the mindset of i need to win this turn i storm counts already at like six or seven like i should be able to win this turn right like i've used my uh, yog will i've already burned through all my things and they're all my exile how would i win otherwise and i just like got stuck in my own head about it um here i am like playing that cute uh, game of exiling these cards to generate additional storm uh but like i don't think i actually paused and thought through how do i win after this ad nauseum happens um because th there's not there's not a way right like i have i'm gonna have one mana available in the pool i can find exactly dark ritual uh which will then let me cast death wish uh but with death wish and zero mana in pool i can't cast a tendrils i can't get two additional mana uh, i don't think there's a way for me to win from this position i i, I just like i i'm functioning on muscle memory and taking game actions at this point but there's not there's not actually a winning line here so this is a pretty disappointing play to watch uh just given how given how the Ogmos will has constricted my ability to play the game so Let's jump forward a little bit. I think I just like sit here like, what can I even draw? And then I'm like frustrated by the fact that I uh, took s seven or nine damage off four cards, which is very high rate. Um, but like, again, even if I drew all my deck cards in the perfect order, there's, there's not a way to order my deck that makes me win the game from this point uh, because of all the things I've done, right? Like this is just poor play that led to not being able to win from the spot. I think if I had cast the Cabal Ritual earlier in that pool, I could have had two additional mana. And actually, that would have done it. If I had, had, if I had cast the Cabal Ritual before casting the Brainstorm and the Lotus, uh, after the Yogg Will, then I could have ad nauseumed into, uh, into enough cards to make a Death Wish into Tendrils work. Um, but yeah, here I just passed the turn. Good. I'm glad at least I slowed down and didn't just kill myself. Uh, because there's no way to win from there. Um, if if he doesn't have the ability to kill me this turn, and it doesn't look like he does, I get I go down to two. 
which is exactly the amount of life I need to be at in order to cast a Doomsday to empty my library into Thassa's Oracle. I'm also getting dangerously close to the spot where 16 cards might be enough that I can Thassa's Oracle into a, into a natural Thassa's Oracle. Um, notably, Dress Down is a dead card at this point, assuming that I'm not going for the... Assuming that I'm going for the Doomsday line. Um... Because it shuts off Thassa's Oracle. There's a Vampiric. So now I can go Vampiric into Gush. Nope, I can't cast Vampiric either because I'm at 2 life. So that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> I think let's just start off on Cantrips and try to get there. Uh, so Serum Visions before Sleight of Hand is correct. So we'll do that. If I can find a Doomsday, I win. Well, Doomsday... I it's actually a hard one, right? Because Doomsday, normally I would be able to Doomsday into Lotus to generate mana, but here I have to Doomsday into Dark Ritual, but that doesn't produce the blue mana for Thassa's Oracle. All the storm lines are also really hard. This is a spot where I think if I sat here for like 10 minutes, I could probably find a way that that could win. Uh, I'm looking at the top two, Demonic Tutor and Pact of Negation. Awesome. So that makes it really hard in its own way, because, again, the Attack Scene Probe is also a dead card. All of my resources are just super constrained at this point. My life total is low enough that there's a lot of dead cards. Um, I, I, I burned... On that Yawgmoth's Will turn, I just burned all of my rituals, so I have no ability to make mana other than the literal card Dark Ritual. Um, I, th there are choices I could have made earlier in that process that would have gotten me to a better spot here, but I don't think there's a way that I can win. Let's see. So, Serum Visions. I can Demonic Tutor for Death Wish. Nope, there's no, there's no way to get more mana for it. So I can Demonic Tutor for Doomsday, but I don't have a... Um, I don't have a ritual in hand. I could gush to generate one mana, to generate one additional black mana. Uh, and then sleight of hand into the doomsday. This is game two, so all the creature removal is out, so I can probably pretty safely go for a Thassa's Oracle that only has two cards left in library. There is a way I could use... So, okay, so if I go... Gush into the Demonic Tutor. Then... Cast Dark Ritual. Oh, sorry. So then I have three mana available. Uh, four mana available, including three black... I can cast Doomsday, cast Sleight of Hand to draw back into Gush, drawing two additional cards, but have zero mana. Yeah, there's just there's no way. Oh, I can use the Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal generates one additional mana. Is there is there a line here where I can use Lotus Petal to get up to one additional? I don't I don't see. I think I'm one mana short. Let's see. Is this casting Gush? Into the Demonic Tutor. Good. Oh, I picked up two islands. That seems wrong. I think I need the black mana. Do I have a swamp? No. I kept the pack of negation on hand. Okay. This seems right, but now what do I find? Because I need black. Oh no, I have. So I have to go for the Death Wish line, given that I don't I didn't pick up the underground sea. Oh, do I go for Stunning Reversal? Stunning Reversal might do it. I can play a land, leave up Stunning Reversal, draw seven cards when they try to kill me. And... Okay, this is incredibly cute. I like this. I like this line, uh, given the situation I found myself in. But I think there might be... There might have been a kill. I don't know. I don't... I don't see it right now. But there might be a kill there. But I think I just went through all the same process before and couldn't find a way to do it. I have to discard down to seven at the end of turn. 
throwing away an island and a card that doesn't do anything. I guess I kept the Gitaxian Probe, which also doesn't do anything, but I guess I can theoretically draw a card off of it. They attack me for three. Uh, I cast Dunny Reversal using the uh, Lotus Petal to put myself down to one and uh, draw seven cards, which is better than losing. I really like this card. I think Dunny Reversal is a card that I, want, I wanted to play because I thought a situation like this might happen. I put it in my graveyard and it should be exiled, but it's not gonna be relevant in this game. Yep, Ste has a Hull Breacher in hand, which is obviously very good, but no blue means that I don't get punished here. And now I have four cards left in library, so I can just naturally Thassa's Oracle. So I just can cast uh, use the sleight of hand to draw a card, or use the Gitaxian Probe to draw a card, and then cast the Thassa's Oracle to win the game. Um, that is wild. Uh, I think if I had played better, I could have passed the turn earlier in that Yawgmoth's Will turn, and won the turn afterwards. Uh, but I got greedy and just went on autopilot and got rid of all my rituals. That made this turn into a much harder game than it should have been. Uh, and I, I can still win, but... Um, Steetha had lethal last turn. I... Oh, okay, so... <laughs> this is that fun world where I... I didn't think I could go for Brain Freeze. Uh, or... Let's see. Why didn't I go for Brain Freeze right there? That's actually a great question. I didn't have Death Wish available, but I could have... Oh, I didn't have enough black mana. I think I, I think there was a line there where I could have gone for it. Um... Yeah, okay, so, so I think there might, I don't know, I'd have to re-look at that situation we were in that, for that turn, but I think I might have been constrained on black mana, but if I had tutored for, I could tutor for Dark Ritual or for the Death Wish, but I didn't have enough black mana, I think, to, to go for both and then go for the Brain Freeze? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about that. I think the turn before this I probably could have, but I don't know. Study Reversal, I think... The thing I learned from this draft is that card is probably too cute in this kind of deck, but I can imagine a different deck that it is very good. Something like a reanimator where you can kill yourself off a Gristle Brand, or, or I guess Gristle Brand's hard to do it, but a bargain deck maybe. Um, but something something where you can, uh, like a Razaketh. I'm trying to think of like any of those reanimator decks and how you can kill yourself to draw seven additional cards and win the game. It seems like it's possible to win. I, don't know, I still I still have faith in in stunning reversal, but it's just an, I don't think it's particularly relevant in this matchup. But anyway, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching these uh, these three, and yeah, this has been it's been a lot of fun talking through kind of the, the these matches and analyzing them after the fact. I I'm gonna go back and rewatch this one again to see if the brain freeze line there actually did work, but I don't think it actually worked. Um, but yeah, this is the game where a mind twist happened in the middle of it. Uh, Bronus, thank you. Yeah, 6-1 ended up being really good. I think this deck uh, could have been a 4-3 through a 7-0. And the one match I did lose against Brandon, I commentated it already. I should have won game one, and I punted it. Game two, I lost. But, I mean, I should have forced him to a game three and seen what would have happened there. Uh, I, I think this deck should have gone 7-0 given all the ways I drew in all these games. I think on average though, just like the range of this is somewhere between a 4-3 and a 7-0 on this deck. But anyway, thanks for hanging out. There'll be two more matches coming uh, on another stream, but for now it's leaving late, so I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, and yeah, save the last last two for another time. Thanks all.